Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, in this video, I wanna show uh, a Raspberry Pi case that I've been looking at for quite a while now. It's the X825 from Geekworm. And uh, it's actually a pretty cool little case uh, for like desktop application, that kind of thing. Just have a, a nice little case to sit on your desk and do what you need to do without all of the unnecessary garbage that a lot of uh, a lot of other cases have uh, without being too minimal. It's a really great sweet spot in my opinion. So uh, let's take a look at the Geekworm X825 right after a message from today's video sponsor. Bookmark.com is a great way to build a unique website in minutes with no coding knowledge required. Just a few clicks and a couple of profile links is all Bookmark.com needs for its AI design assistant to build a website for you. Once the AI has finished up, you can edit the text and the layout to your liking and then publish your new website. Be sure to check out the link in the description to find out more about your new site from bookmark.com. Okay guys, so here we are on my desktop and we can see that we've got some boxes. Uh, we've also got a, an SSD here. This is a Samsung uh, 9 or sorry, 840 Evo, 250 gig uh, SSD. I've also got a two terabyte uh, drive over here, just a mechanical hard drive that I may try to incorporate in there somehow, but we'll see what happens. Uh, also, of course, I've got a Raspberry Pi uh, 4, uh, eight gig, I believe is what this one is. I really wish they say on there somewhere, but uh, anyway, so that's what we've got here. Of course, we've got uh, some boxes here. So let's dig into uh, some of these, get some of these out of the way at least for the time being, so we can see uh, kind of what's going on here. This one is gonna be the case. Uh, shake that out of there like so. Uh, it actually came like this with no no packaging or anything on it. Uh, so not, uh, no, no additional protection outside or between this and the box. So that's just, I think, something to keep in mind there. Uh, let's go ahead. There are some screws here on the back uh, that we'll want to remove this like so then we can take this off kind of nice little hinge system there that's good and then inside we've got some additional stuff it looks like we've got a case fan way so yeah we've got a little little looks like a 40 mil 40 mil case fan there uh, that we'll plug in uh, this is all from geekworm Bought this on Amazon uh, and then of course some screws and really nice feeling uh, button there to to turn things off and on or turn things on, I, I guess. Uh, and of course, and there's a uh, looks like a four pin uh, connector there that'll plug into one of the accessory boards uh, when we get to that point. But there is that that we'll deal with here in a bit. Uh, next box we've got here. Okay, so this is going to be our USB uh, connector uh, to connect the uh, hard drive board uh, to the uh, the rest of the system using a USB 3 connection there. And of course, we've got instructions we're going to set aside and a box. So let's take a look at what this board looks like. Like that. There we go. So it looks like it's got a couple of five volt outs uh, here on the board. Uh, five volt in, if you wanted to use uh, a barrel uh, plug on that, you could do that. Uh, hard drive is gonna go right in there. So that's good. Um, so then we can actually just plug this in. Make sure that's all lined up properly. And just like that, we're good to go. And then it looks like we'll have uh, the option to put some screws in there uh, to actually hold that in place. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. All right, there we go. Now everything is all screwed in uh, with those two. So that's good to go. So that leaves us one more box. And I think this is where we're going to find uh, a bunch more of our stuff here. Uh, more instructions, uh, some more standoffs, and our other board. All right, so here we go. So here we've got our uh, GPIO pins that are going to plug in uh, right over here. And of course, uh, before I do that, it looks like I need to put in some uh, some of these standoffs to actually uh, support things properly there. So let's go ahead and get that done first. 
And as it turns out, none of the included instructions are actually helpful. Uh, they just tell you what, what it is. Okay, so we can see here that this is going to go this way. So it looks like I need to put um, some standoffs there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these because we've got four of the uh, long standoffs in there with the threads, with male and female threads there. So uh, I'm doing this right. This should go here. One of the things that one of the things I really like about this is it's got a pass through on these GPIO pens. Really do appreciate that. It makes it uh, much easier if you wanted to do something with it later, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, I really do like that they've got that pass through there for exactly that reason. All right, so that is that. So then we can take uh, this, plug that in there just like so. Now, I don't have an operating system on here yet, so I will want to flash that uh, at some point before we actually boot this thing up. But uh, that is uh, what we're going to do uh, eventually. So I think at this point, I guess the next thing I need to do uh, is go ahead and put on, yeah, put these, oh, you know what? I screwed that up real good. Yep, I sure did that out of order. So uh, let's try that again. Really does make sense to build from the bottom up rather than just going willy nilly and screwing things up like I did. Okay, so next thing we wanna do here is uh, put these spacers in here like so. Um, and this, I would encourage you to uh, make sure that you don't tighten these all the way down uh, so that you can move things around a little bit as necessary to get all of the holes to line up. All right, so then again, we can line uh, the GPIO pins up here. Hopefully, there we go. Like so, and then we can put these screws in. Now this is, I don't know if you can even see in there, but this, you might be able to put in some low profile uh, heat sinks if you really wanted to do that, but I don't know that you'd need them. With having a fan right there, uh, I think that will provide enough airflow to keep things cool, but I think you could. I think there's enough space in there where you could actually use some heat sinks if you wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, but, but I think you could. So that's definitely something to consider if you wanted to do that. All right, so there we have it. We have it all built and put together. Of course, there is this uh, adapter that'll plug in here uh, to connect the SSD to the Pi, uh, but I don't have an OS on here right now, so I'm gonna have to flash that uh, when I get to that point, uh, but I'm not gonna do that quite yet, I don't think. Yeah, I'll, I'll have access to this. Uh, in fact, can't put it on there now because it'll go in here. So there is that. <clears throat> I think though that pretty much takes care of everything there. Um, so I think our next step could be, um, to put this in the case. We want to make sure that it is, uh, pointed the, the right direction here. Let's see, I'll maybe just slide it in this way. Like so. Yeah, there we go. And all those holes line up. So we should be able to just go ahead and screw that together. Uh, but before I do that, I would do want to make sure that I <clears throat> put this in. I don't think, okay, there's, so there's nothing on the button that makes it need to go any particular direction. So let's go ahead, get that just as tight as we can there. All right, so let's go ahead and get these screws in here. These uh, feet kind of get in the way there. Being able to hold that together. Yeah, maybe what I should do then is take that foot off. Right, so now we just have to need to figure out where this power cable goes. This one right here, I probably in here uh, so, somewhere. So we can take these off and see. 
Well, then I'm just going to assume that it's going to go right there. And if I'm wrong, uh, then I'm wrong and we'll fix it later. <clears throat> so next thing we want to do is uh, probably like so, I think, I think, I think, oops, this there, I think that pretty much takes care of uh, everything there. We can see, oops. Things sort of line up there. We've got access to our camera slot there. Okay, so here we've got a, a five, yeah, a five and a half volts, give or take. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so uh, here we've got everything set up uh, and, and ready to go here. So basically uh, there are two uh, five volt uh, power options on uh, this bottom board. There are two on this top board. Uh, this is a PWM fan uh, that will require uh, some software in order to get it to run and operate the way we want it to. I have noticed a couple of things, however, and this may change in the software, but, um, oh, that was loud. If I plug into here, uh, nothing happens until I press the button and then hopefully, hopefully you can see that that is lit up and we're getting some activity over here uh, and that's, that's fine. However, if we come over to here and plug in, uh, everything just automatically comes on uh, despite the button. Uh, this fan comes on automatically. Um, so you'll, the, and that may change in the software. We'll have, definitely have to take a look at that. Uh, but that's kind of where things are right now. So I think uh, the next steps that we can take should be able to just go ahead. Oh, huh. Interesting. Okay. So as it turns out, because I've got this fan, uh, I don't need <laughs> this fan. In fact, it won't, uh, I'm dumb and didn't even consider that. So, all right. So then we should be able to just close that up. Um, man, it really, these don't line up very well at all. I wonder if I used, uh, the wrong, the wrong stuff there. Okay, so uh, these are lining up much better now. I had originally had uh, these shorter standoffs uh, on the bottom down here and uh, realized that that was my problem. So at this point, we should be good to go. And now I should be able to put uh, put this case top on there. And of course, now everything lines up there much, much better uh, than it did before. So let's go ahead. Of course, you know what? Let's get an operating system on here first. And I think I, think I want to try... Uh, Ubuntu, maybe Ubuntu on here. Uh, I'll see what my options are and uh, we'll see if we can get something flashed. Okay, so it was at this point where I tried to install Ubuntu. Well, I did install Ubuntu for Raspberry Pi and it installed, it was fine, I guess, um, but there were just too many things that didn't work. It was real slow. Uh, it wasn't a great experience. And uh, to make matters even worse, uh, the scripts that I wanted to install for the PWM stuff and uh, to make the case work the way it's supposed to uh, don't work with Ubuntu. So uh, I'm not gonna make you sit through all that. Let's instead just jump over to where I've got a Raspberry Pi OS desktop installed and uh, just kind of jump in from there. So here we can see that I couldn't leave well enough alone, and I've gone ahead and installed uh, Raspberry Pi OS uh, desktop and was able to install all of the scripts uh, that we saw on this X735 uh, V2.5 software. And uh, now, now we're actually reading fan speeds, so that's definitely a good thing. So now that the script is working, we're getting the fan readings that we want. Uh, and the problem that I have still uh, is that this plugging here on the back uh, automatically turns everything on and bypasses uh, all of the functionality of this switch. Uh, so in order to make the switch work, I have to plug in here. Again, I wish they were able to do something to move all of this to the back, um, but they didn't, unfortunately. So uh, everything's working. Everything seems to be working really well. Uh, and like we showed here, uh, we are getting uh, the fan speed of uh, this fan right here on top. In fact, let's see. Yeah, so I stopped with my finger. If I let go with my finger, get it going again, and there we go. 
Uh, now, give it a second. Oops. There we go. So now, now we're reading about 2,000 RPMs on that uh, on that fan. Okay, guys, there you go. There is the Geekworm X825. Now, this is the version two that I've got here. I picked this up on Amazon. Uh, so if you want to check this out, I will have a link in the description where you can pick one of these up. I'll also try to have links to all of the different uh, things that it needs in order to work uh, to its full efficacy, that sort of thing, in the description down below. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're interested in a very a very solid desktop uh, Raspberry Pi case. Uh, I think this is a really, really great option for that kind of a solution. So uh, definitely check that out if you're interested. Also, again, I wanna give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, bookmark.com. I really do appreciate them uh, sponsoring the channel for this video and maybe even some more in the future. So uh, definitely check them out in the link in the description down below as well. That'll be right up there at the top. So I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. But I think before I do that, what I need to do is thank all of the channel members and patrons that are that are that are currently uh, supporting who have supported all of your additional support in addition to watching uh, the videos is very very much appreciated so thank you guys very very much for your support as a channel member or a patron uh, very much appreciated so with all that said though I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up as always thanks for your time I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video